Today I'm going to be testing three different memory cards in the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark II. So I've done a similar test uh, like this for my Olympus Pen F, which is uh, recording this video now. And, um, you know, because I wanted to see if uh, using the UHS-2 cards really made any difference uh, in the Olympus cameras versus using the standard UHS-1 cards. And you can identify the differences basically, you know, it'll say on the card when you buy it or on the box, but also on the back, you know, you'll notice a single row of pins on UHS-1 and a double row on UHS-2. And there's quite a bit of difference in speed. The uh, UHS-1 card, this is the Extreme Pro, does 95 megabits per second. And the uh, UHS-2 card is claiming 280 megabits per second. And long story short, on the Pen F, uh, at least in the field, it really didn't make any difference in camera which card you used. And, you know, these Extreme Pro 280 megabits card, I think I paid like $60 for this 32 gig, and I paid about $30 for the 32 gig 95 megabits card. So it's twice as much for three times the speed. And, and in camera, it really didn't make much difference. Uh, so I recommended getting just the 95 megabits card. Now there was a big difference from 95 megabits card to say, you know, one of the 20 or 30 megabits cards like the SanDisk Ultras, which are cheap. You know, 32 gig, I think I paid like $12 for. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, there was quite a bit of difference when I used that card. It did slow the camera down. And I'll give you a scenario where that's the case. So there is a reason to kind of jump up to the 95 megabits pro. Um, then, you know, the caveat, the only reason you'd want to buy these 280 megabits cards really is in post-processing. Uh, because although in camera it didn't make much difference in terms of the overall speed and use, um, there is a big difference in post-processing when you're trying to download these off onto your computer. Uh, it's, you know, three times faster using one of these cards, at least. Uh, you know, assuming you have a UHS-2 card reader, you know, and a fast computer, uh, you'll save a lot of time in post-processing if you have to download, you know, tons of uh, images and video off the card. So if that's important to you, yeah, it's money well spent to get uh, these faster cards for the post-processing side. But in camera, you know, if you don't mind waiting a little bit just to download and offload these from your card onto your computer, then uh, you can save quite a bit of money just getting these Extreme Pro 95 megabits cards. And... Let me give you a scenario of what happened when I used the UltraDisc, uh, SanDisk Ultra cards and why I don't use those anymore in my camera. One is, you know, because for video they're too slow and you get memory card errors. Uh, and also for uh, taking pictures, you know, if I fire off a burst of uh, 10 shots or for 10 seconds, and you'll see in a second what happens. But the camera slowdowns quite a bit right after the buffer fills up. And then after the buffer is full and you're done taking pictures, it takes a long time to uh, write to the card. And although you can continue to take pictures while it's writing to the card, which is really nice because not every camera does that. Some of them you have to wait until it's writing before you can take another picture. But at least with Olympus, you don't have to wait. Um, what happens is you can't, I can't review the pictures. I have to wait. I can't hit the play button because what happened is I was at the dog park taking pictures of my dogs running around and I, I was manually focusing and I went back to check to make sure I hit focus and when I had the SanDisk Ultra card in I had to wait 10, 20, 30 seconds sometimes before it was done writing to the uh, card before I could check focus and that's that's really forever uh, when you're out you know taking pictures of action right uh, versus these Extreme Pro cards I was waiting you know five, ten seconds at most uh, before I could go back and review the picture. So it was really a big difference. Um, you know, and I wasn't normally firing off 10 seconds straight. So, uh, you know, going back to play back the images was almost instantaneous when I used these pro cards. So that's one scenario you really want to spend a little extra bit of money for these cards is one for that uh, ability to pay, play back and review your cards. And then also for video, these are going to make a difference. And I'll, I'll do a different tutorial on that. Uh, once I kind of get video down, but um, in any case, and again, the caveat being if post-processing these faster cards uh, can make a difference if that's important to you. Um, so let's go ahead and start testing. Um, right now I have the SanDisk Ultra card in the uh, OMD EM10 Mark II, and 
I'm using some very, very basic settings. I wanted to eliminate as many variables as I can that might slow the camera down outside of just the card itself. So I'll be shooting in full manual and uh, also a fixed white balance of 5400K. I'm gonna be shooting in single point autofocus so it only has to focus once. Um, and I'm gonna be turning off image stabilization because I don't want the camera you know, trying to figure all these things out on top of trying to write to the car while it's in high burst mode. Um, I just wanna test how fast is the card, not how fast is the camera in that scenario. Now, the second test, I am going to test sort of one processing aspect of the camera. And in that test, I'm just gonna be firing off one picture or taking one, one shutter button, clicking that once, and then using the art bracketing uh, feature in the camera to uh, process 20 art filters on a single image and writing those to the card. And if, if, you know, if the processing is very slow in this camera, then having a slow card won't make a difference. So um, I was just kind of curious to see how much uh, processing power this camera has, say, compared to a Pen F. And eventually I'm gonna do this uh, EM1 Mark II uh, memory card test. But this has two memory card slots, a UHS-1 and a UHS-2. So there's literally, I think, four times as many tests I need to do on this one. <laughs> um, so that's gonna have to be a whole separate video all by itself. Uh, but, you know, if, if the processing is pretty fast in the camera, then you wanna have a fast card so that it can offload those as quickly as possible so you can move on to your next bracketing shot. So whether it's art bracketing or exposure bracketing or whatever kind of bracketing you're doing, um, this, is, this will give you some idea of um, how long it takes and the difference it takes, the difference between slow cards and fast cards will make for you. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and format the card. And while that's formatting, let me just make a note that uh, when the card gets about 95% full, it slows down for whatever reason. I'm not sure what the technical reason is, but generally speaking, when a card is near its full capacity, it's gonna slow down your camera, uh, just so you know. Um, and I only know that because it, it happens to me all the time. I'll fill up a 32 gig card, uh, when I'm, particularly when I'm shooting video in no time. And, you know, the card is slowing down on me uh, and causing, you know, uh, buffer problems, uh, video card uh, errors, etc. So try not to fill up your card if you can help it. Uh, okay, so let me make sure. And I did a full factory reset earlier and then I changed all the settings as I mentioned. But I need to fix one more quick thing. All right, now we're good. So we're one sixth of a second, 1600 ISO, f5.6. And I am in high speed burst mode and we're shooting large, fine, plus raw. So for each picture, we'll be writing um, one JPEG and one raw file. And just to note, in my previous video, I took a picture with the lens cap on, so it was taking black pictures, uh, and I was trying to eliminate any kind of exposure or color pro uh, processing, but uh, what ended up happening was the JPEG images came out to like 600K, and it, the raw files were like 10 meg, so they were much smaller than they normally would be. So it wasn't quite as a realistic test as say, taking an actual picture like I am here, even though this is just a prop. Uh, because, you know, a JPEG file should be normally six to 10 meg, and the raw files should be, you know, closer to 15 to 20 megabytes, right? Um, so in any case, let's go ahead and get started. I think everything's set. Let me just uh, wait for the timer to, to round up. I'm just using this as a, a timer. Let me get to the tenth uh, zero mark and we'll start. And I'm just gonna fire off for 10 seconds. Wow. That went for what? What'd that fire off? About two or three seconds before it slowed down? Okay, and that's 10 seconds. And now what I'm doing is I'm waiting for it to flush the buffer to the memory card. And I know it's still writing to the card because A, I, I can't hit the play button. It doesn't do anything. And also there's a red blinking icon up here in the corner, uh, upper, upper left-hand corner. And it's still blinking. It's still blinking. And blinking.
Okay, it stopped at 44 seconds. So from the time I hit the shutter button to the time it finished writing to the card uh, was 44 seconds. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to the SanDisk Extreme Pro 95 megabits UHS-1 card. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick format. Then let me turn the bra oh, bracketing's off. Okay, so make sure I'm in high speed shutter. And we'll wait two seconds and go. I'm holding this down for 10 seconds. And I think you probably do hear the difference already. Okay, and that was 10 seconds. And it's writing, it's writing. Still writing. Stopped, okay. So that took um, exactly 20 seconds from the time I hit the shutter button to the time it finished fluff, uh, flushing. So it, it was twice as fast or more than twice as fast, basically. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch over to the Extreme Pro card. And this is the 280 megabits UHS-2. Oops. Okay, sorry, I had to cut because the, the battery ran out <laughs> while I was doing the test. I'll be right back. Okay, every time, but we're, <laughs> we're back. Uh, fresh batteries in all the cameras. You know, three microphones synced up, two cameras and batteries. Anyway, uh, where was I? I was on the uh, 280 megabits card. And let me go ahead and do a quick format again. Okay. Make sure we're in high speed shutter so everything looks good. Wait for the timer. We're at 50, go. Much better. And that was 10 seconds. And it's writing, it's writing, it's done. And that only took five seconds to write all of those images. So that's, that's a little surprising. Um, okay, so that was, that was test number one. Let's do test number two, uh, where I do the bracketing shots with the 20 art filters. So we're gonna go ahead and leave the same card in here. And we're just gonna turn on the art bracketing. Let me just make sure. And I have a video on bracketing uh, as well. But that's not what this is about. Okay. So right now I'm going to take one picture and then it's going to process 20 art filters and write those 20 files to the card. So it'll kind of get a feel for, you know, the CPU processing power and, you know, writing to the card. So let me put this in a single shot and take it off of continuous. So now we're in single shot uh, shutter. So we're just going to take one picture. So 22 seconds to write 20 images to the, uh, the card. So let's do the same thing with the Extreme Pro. And I'm not going to format it or anything. We'll leave it the same as this card. Wait for the timer to hit a 10 second mark and there. So now it's writing. Okay, so it's exactly the same, 22 seconds. Um, now, let's do the same thing for the SanDisk Ultra card. Okay. 
Okay. Wait for the marker. And go. We're approaching 22 seconds. Oh, exactly the same. Okay, that was kind of interesting. I think the R bracketing test uh, showed us that the processor is not fast enough to keep up with its ability to actually write to the uh, memory card. So even using the SanDisk Ultra card, finishing in 22 seconds was a little surprising to me uh, that it wasn't faster. So if you are doing bracketing work, whether it's flash bracketing, exposure bracketing, you know, R bracketing, uh, maybe a slower card will be okay. Um, basically, uh, you've seen the methodology I use. You can kind of duplicate this uh, same test on your camera. And in the comments below, let me know what you find. If you if you got similar results, not only with the R bracketing uh, test I did, but also with the uh, exposures, the, the shutter speed and uh, buffer flushing and all of that. Um, what really surprised me in this test was that the uh, OMD M10 Mark II seems to work better uh, with the UHS-2 cards than the Pen F. And because when I did the test on the Pen F, I didn't think there was that much difference. Um, I'll have to go back and look at the actual numbers, but uh, ultimately um, the UHS-2 card did 44 exposures. The <clears throat> uh, UHS-1 Extreme Pro with the 95 megabits did 29 exposures in 10 seconds, and then the Ultra Disc only did 18 exposures. So there was a um, very incremental and what should be expected improvement from one card to the next. Um, anyway, I have some more uh, videos planned, uh, particularly on uh, uh, white balance and exposure, and um, also I'm I'm gonna give some thought to doing a memory card test for this uh, EM1 Mark II because it has, you know, the latest processors and it has a dual card slot. So I'm going to have to run at least four times as many tests as I did on this one. And I'll try and consolidate it a little bit faster or do it a little faster because otherwise it'd be like a two hour video, right? Uh, but I do have some ideas on how to do that. So, um, Go ahead and hit subscribe if you want to see that and some other videos I have coming up soon. Um, again, as always, uh, I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.